The appetizer is prepared by Clifford Harrison at the popular Bacchanalia in Atlanta. It is sautéed Maine lobster with sweet corn and mushrooms. Then Randall Wadner, who works in an unusual kitchen, presents an unusual entree. It's ancho chili glazed ostrich, which is similar to beef, served with a smoked onion relish. Finally, pastry chef Patrice Cayote does dessert from Le Cirque at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. It's a lemon tart with passion fruit meringue and sorbet. The latitudinarian atmosphere at Bacchanalia in Atlanta reflects the owner chefs Anne Quatrano and Clifford Harrison. Both were trained in California, then worked on the East Coast from Nantucket to Manhattan. They moved to Atlanta in 1992. Chef Harrison offers this Maine lobster first course. The lobster is served with a ginger garlic rosemary vinaigrette. It also includes honey, soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, a little sesame oil, and peanut oil. Now the chef preps the lobster tail and claws. What I do now is I take a stick of some sort and I insert it in the back of the lobster because when I boil them, they'll bend. So this way it keeps the meat nice and straight so that you don't have any curled up meat. Uh, boiling water, and it goes this way. You're gonna cook this lobster again so we don't cook it all the way. This goes in there. And um, you just have to look at it. You have to actually look at the, uh, the meat. You can see it from here. It turns a little opaque and it gets a little hard. I'll let that go for a little while more. The meat has been removed from the tail and claws. Okay, we have a corn, which is gonna go with the lobster. And uh, I just cut it right off the cob, like so. The saute begins with clarified butter. Take these two guys out. Just heat it up. We'll start off with the uh, mushrooms and the corn, we'll put the lobster in. Very simple. The ginger vinaigrette I've taken that has been strained, and all I do is lightly heat it up. It's already pretty thick vinaigrette. That back. Just take a little touch of butter. What this butter does is it just glosses it a little bit, and gives it a little, again, a, a rounder flavor. And that's all. The vinaigrette itself is pretty thick. Wait till this smokes a little. You can check it out by throwing one in. There you go. Throw those in. We're gonna get these mushrooms a little crispy. Throw these mushrooms in. Oh, we don't need all of those. That's it. We're gonna take a little a bit of sunflower sprouts here, which are nice in the uh, springtime. We also have a couple of roasted organic beets. At this point, you might have to add just a little bit more clarified butter. You can just check into your pan to see if you need some more. I don't like to use too much. And that's it. Remember, the lobster's already been cooked, so you're basically just warming it up blanched off. We'll take the ginger vinaigrette, which has been warmed, and a little touch of butter added to it. Put it on the plate. I'm going to take a little bit of parsley oil that we made earlier. Put a little that on the plate. Lobster is, you can feel it, it's already cooked through, it's clean, you want to, that's it. Take a little bit like that. We have a 
little bit of vanilla oil. Shake it up a little. Drizzle a little on top, around. This is sea salt, which I put through a grinder. A little bit of black pepper. And that's it. One of the most remarkable kitchens that the great chef's crew has experienced is in Wheeling, Illinois, at the Weber Grill Restaurant. Yes, Weber Grill is in your backyard. Randall Waidner is the chef, and instead of ranges, he cooks on huge kettle grills. Chef Waidner presents ancho glazed ostrich. Okay, we're gonna do ancho chili glazed ostrich with a smoked onion relish. First thing I'm gonna do is demonstrate how to smoke the onions. Got some three large Spanish, on Spanish onions. I've just peeled them. You wanna set your grill up for indirect cooking. I have some hickory wood chips that you wanna soak. And the reason why you wanna soak them in water is you want them to smolder. You don't want them to burn hot. You just want to smoke. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna brush the onions with some olive oil. just a little season right on top. Go over the grill. Just place the onions right in the middle. Note that the coals are banked to the sides. This then becomes indirect cooking. You want to just take your chips, just let them fall right into the fire. Make sure you get them down in. And you want to close your grill. You adjust your dampers on top so that the smoke just doesn't escape and it smolders and burns a little slower. And you get a nice low cooking temperature for the smoked onions. Onions take about 45 minutes, slow roast. Okay, the onions have finished smoking. You can see they've changed color a lot and they're nice and soft. What you want to do is just want to take them off, put them in the refrigerator and let them cool down. After cooling, the onions are halved, peeled and sliced. The relish also includes sliced green onions. Chop your cilantro. Juice from one lime. A little bit of seasoned salt. A splash of balsamic vinegar, a little bit of olive oil. Mix thoroughly and set aside. Now the chef deals with the ostrich. This is a piece of ostrich that comes from the thigh. It's very lean, very tender. What I'm going to do is I'm going to brush it with a little ancho chili glaze. It's ancho chilies are, are dried poblano peppers. The glaze also contains chipotle peppers, chopped onions, garlic, brown sugar, honey, molasses, tomato paste, and water. Now we're gonna just sear it. It's seared directly. Really quick. After the meat is seared over direct heat, it's moved to the center of the grill and cooked indirectly for 15 to 20 minutes. 
And then what you want to do is you just want to keep brushing the ostrich with the glaze until it's done. I like to serve ostrich medium rare because it stays very nice and tender. Let the ostrich rest after grilling. Okay, and then to carve the ostrich, you want to carve it against the grain. And then this one, the grain is going this way, so I want to slice it this way. Serve it with a little of your smoked onion relish. Right on top. And I like to drizzle a little of uh, ancho glaze. The Maccioni family of Le Cirque in Manhattan have opened a property in Las Vegas at the Bellagio. Historically, they've always been partial to upwardly mobile French chefs like Daniel Boulud and Jacques Torres. At Bellagio, French pastry chef Patrice Cayot prepares this lemon tart and meringue. So I'm going to show you first the way to make the sugar dough. So you have all the ingredients. We have the cake flour, the bread flour, the two sugar. I'm going to explain why I separate half the sugar. We have the butter, the eggs, lemon zest, an half vanilla bean, and a pinch of salt. All the ingredients except the eggs and half the sugar are creamed in an electric mixer. So you put on a mixer bowl, like that. Don't go too fast. And when the, the mixer starts, you're going to crack the eggs the two eggs, like that. And that does the second part of the sugar. Why I do that? Because I'm going to whip the sugar with the eggs, and it's going to give a, a better texture of the sugar dough. It's going to be very, very crispy after. So what we do, we whip like that. Don't scare to whip. The time you whip your eggs, the butter, the flour, the sugar, the vanilla bean, and the, the zest. Sound slowly. Don't sound too much. So you mix. Give a nice texture to the eggs and the sugar. There is going to be a bit like fluffy. That. that part of the recipe is very important. It's the, the part you're going to, to give the crispy at the door. All the, the, the butter, the particular of the butter, is going to mix with the, with the flour, with the, the sugar. It's going to, to give a very nice texture at the sugar dough. So you see the egg white and the sugar start a little bit more white. So a little bit more. Like that. Fine. Okay. So you see? It's like a very fine sound. You see also the piece of lemon? It's going to give a very nice flavor after the sugar dough. So what we do, put the eggs with the sugar like that. And 
and you mix. Don't mix too much. That's the opposite of the, example, uh, a bread dough or brioche dough. You want to give a lot of power. This one, you don't want too much power. You don't want your, your, your dough after strain in the oven. So you just mix a little bit, like that. That's it. Now, you're going to keep the dough in the fridge, wrap on the plastic, and we keep it in the, in the fridge for a couple hours. The chilled dough is rolled out. OK. OK. And that's fine. So now you're going to, we have some circle like that, and you put a little bit of butter or if you want some uh, oil, but butter, I think that, that's the best way. We're going to cut some, uh, like that, pick up that. The tarts will be baked at 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. To roll the dough like that, and after with a knife, cut properly. So now, after the, the tart shell, the, the bake, we're going to make the lemon uh, cream. It's a very, very easy recipe. That's lemon juice, sugar, divide again uh, in two parts, eggs, butter, and lemon zest. So what we do, we put the lemon juice, the lemon zest, the butter, okay. Then you're going to that. And uh, half sugar. OK. Now you crack the eggs. Five eggs. OK. Sorry. The second uh, part of the sugar you put with the eggs, like that. Okay. And you mix together. When you put sugar with eggs or with yolk, make sure you, you whip immediately because the sugar with the yolks make a chemical reaction and burn the yolks. So after you're going to have a very, very small uh, piece of yolks, that's not very tasty. You know? So you, you whip. Sometimes you watch the lemon juice, your sugar, and your butter. That's a very, very simple recipe. It's one of the first recipes I make when I was uh, young and I started pastry. It's still, uh, I still use the same. That's very, very, very tasty, very creamy. And also, it's very easy to make. It's possible you make that at home. The lemon juice butter mixture is brought to a boil. Butter, it's almost uh, melt. OK? So now, you see everything boil? What we do? Don't stop mix. That's very important, because if you go too fast and you don't mix, you're going to burn the eggs. That's the only, maybe, very difficult thing to, to realize at that recipe. So what we do? You mix together like that. We call that tempura. See, you mix. And we bring boil everything. One more time. The lemon mixture thickens quickly and is taken off the heat. OK. You see? So now what we need to do, we need to fill the, the tart shell immediately because that cream starts uh, strong very, very quickly. So you mix very well like that. Small layer like that. And we're going to fill tart shell like that. OK. You see, it's very, very creamy. OK. Chill the tarts for 30 minutes or more. The tarts are garnished with Italian meringue, which is beaten egg whites, sweetened with both sugar and simple syrup, heated to the soft ball stage. The meringue is flavored with the pulp and seeds of passion fruit. Okay. It gives a very nice flavor, but also it gives a little bit of color, like yellow, orange color. It's going to be nice on a plate. 
the meringue is piped onto the chilled tarts. You've done your sheet pan like that? So, when this one is finished, we just put a little bit of sliced cinnamon. Give a nice looking and also a great taste. Okay? Then the tarts go into a salamander or broiler to finish. You're going to see the meringue. It's going to be fluffy, a nice golden color. See? Garnish includes strawberries warmed in butter. What we do? We put a little bit of sugar. That's very, very fast. That part of the recipe, you need to do that at last minute. You see? It's almost done. What we do, we put a little bit of balsamic vinegar, like that. At home, if you don't have a very old balsamic vinegar, what you need to do, is like maybe reduce a little bit the balsamic first. Strawberry puree garnishes the plate with the finished tart. If you want very fancy, make very fancy. You put a very nice strawberry like that on the sugar, okay? And we're going to serve with the strawberry sorbet. Okay? So you make a nice canal like that. Okay? Like that. A second dish. Okay? 